Hey, welcome back everyone and welcome to this new tutorial on how to make an endless game so in this video we will have a game over screen that shows up when the player collides with one of the obstacles then the player can replay the game or quit so uh, let's get started But first I wanted to mention that we have a little bug about our player movements. So when you select the player, you see that we are using the character controller to move the player. But when you go to scripts, player controller, you see that we are using the method controller.move to move the player forward. But on the other hand, we are uh, moving the player between lanes using uh, transform.position equals the target position and this is going to mess up all the colliders so when you go back into unity you see that when we hit this ramp button you see that the player can pass through uh, the traffic cone as you can see it right now so to fix this we have two solutions the first one is to uh, try to change the transform that position vector to the target position using the method controller dot move and the other one it's a little trick that I found is to try to access the controller center using controller dot center equals controller dot center and this is going to fix that problem so when we go back into Unity, hit this ramp button, you see now that the player can collide with this traffic cone and it's working. But there is another solution and it's to try to change the transform dot position to the target position using a controller dot move. And the code will be like this. So let's comment this. The idea is to check if uh, the transformed position equals the targeted position, then we need to return. Otherwise, we need to calculate the difference between these two vectors and move the player along that direction. So you can just copy and paste this instead of using this line of code and the problem will be fixed so let's save this and go back into unity you see now we have a little bit of smoothness about the player movements and at the same time the player can collide with these traffic cones now let's start making the game over screen so let's start by creating a new panel in the hierarchy right click UI and choose a panel and let's change the background to a black color then let's rename this panel to game over panel then under this panel let's create UI and let's choose a button and I'm gonna change the name of this button to be replay button so let's change the size over here and let's also change the color to a blue color then under here we have the text let's change the text to replay or restart or whatever and let's change the font size to 25 and the color to white color you can play around with these settings now let's duplicate this button and let's rename it to quit button then let's move it upward by changing the position along the Y to minus 60 and let's change the text as well to quit and I'm gonna resize it like that now let's add text using UI text 
and let's change the position of this text to the top center over here you can also see the UI hit this 2d icon then double click this item now you can see it over here let's change the pivot to 1 then let's center this text about there and let's uh, change the font size and also the height and let's change this text to game over so the player can know that uh, we are in, in game over state then let's try with red color now we have the game over screen so let's uh, deactivate it by default we are going to activate this game over panel when the player collides with one of the obstacles and to do that we are going to make a new script that is going to be responsible for the player states and also the score later on so let's right click create c sharp script and let's call this player manager so double click it to open it up on visual studio but first we need to attach this script to a game object in our game so let's create an empty game object and let's rename it to player manager as well then drag and drop the player manager script now let's go back and let's start by creating new variables and the first one will be public static so static is a global variable that we can access it from other scripts and let's uh, call this game over and it's going to be a boolean by default it's going to be false then we need a reference for the game over panel so let's make public game object and let's call this game over panel as well then in the update method we are going to check if the game is over we are going to stop the game for example putting time dot time scale to zero and then we are going to activate the game over panel using game over panel dot set active to true but we need somehow to change the game over from false to true when the player collides with one of the obstacles and this is going to be in the player controller script then the script is going to stop the game and uh, activate the game over screen but first we need somehow to tag our obstacles so we can know that the player collides with one of these obstacles and not the road or the uh, or uh, the coin and to do that we are going to create a new tag so over here let's add a new tag and hit this plus icon and let's call this tag obstacle then hit this save and now we are going to go back into our prefabs folder and we are going to change the tag of the obstacle to the obstacle tag so here we have the two traffic cones so select these traffic cones and change the tag from end tag to obstacle the same thing for all the tiles and here we have the roadworks barrier is the obstacle of this tile so change the tag to obstacle as well the same thing for this one just double click the prefab to open it up now in the player controller script and because we are using the character controller there is a predefined method and it's called uh, on controller collider hit it's like the start and the update method 
but it's going to be called when the player collides with something so under here let's call this method we need just to write on controller and this is the method and it takes uh, the hit parameter and this hit parameter contains all the information about what the player hits so we are going to check if hit the transform the tag equals obstacle in this case we are going to change the game over from false to true and we can access that variable using player manager dot game over equals true and that's it so save this go back into unity select the player manager then drag and drop the game over panel over here now to test this let's start the game so the player is moving you can change the lane and when I hit this collider you see that the game over shows up to replay the game or quit but as you can see when I hit this replay button nothing happened and that's because we didn't add on click events to these buttons so to do that let's create a new script under scripts create C sharp script and let's call this events then double click it now in this script we are going to write all the on click events so let's delete the start and update method and let's create the first one so let's create public void and let's call this replay game and to replay the game we are going to load the, the scene and to do that we need to use uh, scene management so using unity engine dot scene management and over here we are going to use the scene manager dot load scene and this takes the scene index or the, the name of the scene to load it and our scene is called level so let's write level then to quit the game let's create a new method and let's make it public as well void and let's call this quit game and to quit the game we are going to use application dot quit now let's save this and uh, go back into unity and let's create a new game object using right click create empty reset the transform and let's rename this to events then drag and drop the event script to this game object and now to use the methods inside this script we need to select the button for example the replay button under the game over panel so select this button and under here we have this on click so hit this plus icon then drag and drop the events and under here we have the event script and select it to replay game the same thing for the quit button select this button to click the plus sign then drag and drop this empty game object and the same thing under events select the quit game method now let's disable this by default you see when I hit this run button We can play around and when we collide with this obstacle we have this game over screen and to replay the game let's hit this replay button you see that the game was uh, replayed but it is stopped that's because we put the time dot time scale to zero and to fix that we need to make sure that when the level was loaded 
we need to make sure that the time dot timescape is equal one now save this and let's replay the game again we can play around we can avoid obstacles we have this game over screen we can replay the game and yeah we can replay the game again and that's pretty much it so we have a game the same thing when you collide with this traffic cone we have this game over screen and we can replay the game over and over again